Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny. Welcome back, finally, to some more FNAF news. It's been quite a while since we've been so busy with Ruin, but we're hopping back into the swing of things because we've got a lot to talk about. The FNAF movie, a whole bunch of brand new FNAF merchandise, even a brand new book. So quite frankly, let's not waste any more time at the start of this video. I know you guys have been dying for some more FNAF news, so... Here we go. Don't forget to scroll down, tickle that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything FNAF. Let's kick this video off by talking about that new book I mentioned earlier, and that is the upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's Glow in the Dark coloring book, releasing August 6th of 2024. The description states this coloring book is packed full of terrifyingly wonderful scenes from the books, the comics, and the game. With over 96 pages of coloring fun, featuring the newest characters and animatronics, and 24 glow in the dark pages. This this book is perfect for any Freddy Fazbear's Pizza super fan. So I do actually have the original coloring book. It released in 2021 and it just features a bunch of the characters and some pretty basic settings. So I'm hoping with this new coloring book, like it says, hopefully we get some familiar scenes that we actually see in the games, in the books, because I think that'd be amazing. Plus the glow in the dark aesthetic could be kind of cool. Next up, let's talk about a whole bunch of miscellaneous merchandise, starting off with these brand new Glamrock Chica socks. These were released by Hot Topic, not entirely sure why they only did Glamrock Chica, but Hey, at least the art is pretty cute. And then we've also got Bioworld releasing two brand new shirts. The first one featuring Balloon Freddy, very crudely cropped into some very colorful squares. And then we got some new artwork of a trading card featuring the Sun and Moon Daycare Attendant. Moving on now to Funko, we've got a whole bunch of news regarding them. First of all, they released their brand new Sun and Moon Funko Pop. This guy's gonna be hitting your Hot Topic stores very, very soon, if not right now, as you can see from these real life photos. I've been checking my local Hot Topic, unfortunately, no luck just yet, though I was able to order him on the Hot Topic website, if that's your last resort. I still can't get over how good this pop looks, and hopefully if he sells well, we can get other security breach characters in the form of Funko Pop. Next up for Funko, we just got revealed to us their brand new Survive Till 6am game, Security Breach Edition. Now I do have the original Survive Till 6am game, though I've never played it, so I'm not entirely sure what you do in the game. But for this Security Breach Edition, as you can see, the cover now features the Glamrock animatronics as well as Vanessa. We get a look at the back. Can you survive the night at Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex? To get through the night, be sure to sneak through the Pizza Plex, conserve your power, and avoid Vanny and her friends. Also on the back, we get a look at the playing board as well as some of the cards and die included. Seems like that's coming up pretty soon. I'd be interested to know, have any of you played the original Survive Till 6am game? Are you going to be picking up this Security Breach Edition? And lastly, for Funko News, we got something very exciting because next year in 2024, we will be getting a Ruin Way. Four characters in the common wave with three different lines. Now, unfortunately, we don't know just yet what characters are included, what kind of products we're going to be getting, figures, plushies, pops, mystery minis. So with that said, I'd be interested to know who do you want to see in this Ruin wave? I know the common answer is going to be all the glam rocks, but do you think Funko is going to be ballsy enough to make the mimic? or the Entity, or maybe even Cassie. Moving on now to Hex, Docco showed a high-resolution image of the prototype for their upcoming Mangle plushie, and she looks absolutely fantastic. The Endo head looks a bit goofy, but and again, keep in mind, this is a prototype. This is not the final version of the plushie. And you may also be able to spot in this image because his design is so complex, they are going to be including support stands for the plushie. Lastly, for Hex, we've got an update on the upcoming puppet plush. You may remember we saw this in a previous FNAF News video and... Let's say fans weren't all too happy with the body and the face. Luckily though, Docco and the Hex team listened to the community's feedback, and this is what the updated design for the Puppet Plush looks like. An absolutely fantastic upgrade. Honestly, it looks spot on to what a Puppet Plush would look like. It looks practically identical to what the puppet looks like in FNAF 2. Docco also showed off an updated preview of the Glow in the Dark gimmick for this plushie. And in case you haven't noticed already, the puppet does come with a gift box accessory that also glows in the dark. Moving on now to YouTube's, they showed off some images of their upcoming flocked FNAF 1 characters. And if you don't know what flocked means, basically they've got this fuzzy material that makes it look like they're made out of fur. We have also previously gotten a look at a flocked Foxy figure, so it seems like, again, all the FNAF 1 gang are going to be getting their flocked variants. Quickly, let's talk about some fanverse updates. We've got Nixon over on Twitter announcing what might be a possible change to the t jock Ignited collection. He said a few days ago, after thinking about it, I don't think I'm going to include classic mode in the Ignited collection. Right 
right now, the plan is T-Jock Reborn and T-Jock Story Mode, both remade from the ground up with new gameplay and story for $19.99. Expect more T-Jock Ignited Collection updates in August. Now, if I remember correctly, we did get some very early previews of what a classic mode in the Ignited Collection would look like. That must have been ages ago, and in fact, I don't think we've had an update on classic mode since, so honestly, I'm not surprised by this news. Story Mode alone, I've heard a lot of people say could go for 20 bucks anyway, so throwing in Reborn as well, I'd say that's a pretty fair package. I'm also very intrigued to see what Nixon means by stay tuned for more T-Jock news in August because, well, today's August 1st. We do have FNAF's nine year anniversary coming up, and yes, I did say nine years, that's gonna be crazy. Maybe I'll do a predictions video for that. And now let's quickly move on to FNAF Ruin because if you've somehow missed the news, it finally released the other day. About 12 hours before the DLC went live, Steelworld did push an update for Security Breach, the main game that mainly just included some UI changes to the game over screen, the settings, the pause menu, nothing too interesting really. Though that update did also bring us the main menu for Ruin with a quick description of what the DLC is about. And speaking of main menus, maybe something you missed, the Security Breach base game also got an updated title screen. This is what that old one looked like and as you can see definitely makes more sense to have the logo on the left. If you're trying to play the DLC on PlayStation and on launch day you had a few problems, well, don't worry, Steelworld did address and fix those issues. Later in the day on July 25th, which was launch day, they tweeted out the installation issues regarding Ruin DLC for the physical version of Security Breach on PlayStation have been resolved. Head to the PlayStation Store and grab the DLC for free. Thank you for your patience and support. Now it's game on. And just as a quick reminder, currently Ruin is only available on Steam on the PC, on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. It has been confirmed to be coming to Xbox and Switch at a later date. Exactly when it's going to be available on Xbox and Switch, we currently don't know, unfortunately. And also anyone playing on the Epic Game Store, unfortunately, there's been no confirmation if the DLC is coming to that platform just yet. All right, well, now let's move on to the final topic for today's FNAF News video, and that is, of course, the FNAF movie. Quickly, before we get to the main topic at hand for the film, we do got to talk about a delay. Don't worry, it's not the film itself, though it is its official novel. That was announced with a release date of July 5th. Well, it's now been delayed three weeks to December 26th. The official novel is, of course, written by the people who wrote the actual film script, Seth Cudback, Emma Tammy, as well as Scott, with help adapting the script to novel form by Andrea Wagner. And now let's move on to the main topic at hand. The official age rating for the FNAF film has been revealed and some people are a little bit mixed. Cause the news broke the other day that the film has officially been rated PG-13. Now to most people, this came as absolutely no surprise. Though some people did want it to be rated R, there were also a lot of people who were expecting it to be just flat out PG. Thankfully, I'd say we've gotten that nice middle ground of PG-13, which like I said, I was expecting, I think most people were expecting anyway as well. It's been rated PG-13 for strong violent content, bloody images, and also language. Which which, quite frankly, I'd say is a pretty fair deal. We do already know about some pretty traumatizing and terrible scenes in the film, first of all, with the suit, that mechanic Freddy suit with the endo that looks like a goddamn saw trap. So even though in some people's minds it seems like they have toned down the film, I'd say there's still a lot of pretty traumatizing stuff to look forward to. Though I am gonna be honest and point out there's probably gonna be some censorship in the film. We already see possibly Hank's death, at least when he's attacked by Bonnie. All we see is this bloody hand on the door window that for a lot of people kind of sealed the fate that, oh yeah, they're making the FNAF movie kid-friendly. I think it just seems like there's gonna be select scenes that go a bit more hardcore than other scenes, and in that case, that's a pretty tame scene. But I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'd love to know what are your thoughts on this PG-13 rating. Again, I feel like violence, blood, and swearing, that's all I need in my funny spooky bear movie. But that is going to do it for this FNAF news video. Thank you all so much for watching. Also, thanks to anyone who's been watching my Ruin playthrough. I have a few other Ruin topics I want to talk about on this channel, and maybe I'll throw together a compilation of all my crazy reactions while playing through. But like I said, that's going to do it for today. Stay on the lookout for more news and Ruin content in the future, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.